Hey everybody, Fletch from All Things Overlanding here. On today's episode of the podcast slash vlog, it's going to be a fun one. It's going to be interesting because uh, if you don't follow me on other channels, you may not know this, but I bought a brand new MacBook Air a couple months ago with the one with the new M1 chip, if you're familiar with Apple devices, the really super fast one that holds battery for a really long time. And I uh, love it. It's fantastic. Until I dropped it on the ground and it exploded. So it is currently at the Apple Store. It's been there for over a week now. I have not heard a word. They have not told me that they've even looked at it. So I am without a laptop and I'm running out of scheduled content. So this video is literally going to, and podcast, is literally going to be one take. One take, straight through, no editing, no fancy graphics. Sorry guys for that, but it was either that or no content. So this is what we're doing. Um, so again, I'm going to touch on today, the topic is going to be my top 10 pieces of overlanding gear that literally changed everything for me. Um, I know there are a lot of videos out there of people talking about like, oh, this is the thing you need, or this is the thing you have to have. A lot of my stuff is really budget oriented, but there are things that like before I knew about them or before I had them, it was much more difficult to go on a trip. It took a lot longer to get prepared, to get ready and go. And I was not as secure or not as safe, not as prepared as I should be probably for some of the trips that I was taking. So I'm gonna talk through that stuff. Um, before we dive in too deep though, did wanna to touch on my featured partners, of course. Um, Trail Build, Offra, uh, they actually helped me out with the wheels and tires that I've got on the truck now that I'm super, super excited about. But I'll put a link in the description below that will actually take you to my setup. So particularly if you are a an Xterra person and you like the setup and you want to get it, uh, make sure when you click through there, if you do purchase something, there is a drop down that says, how'd you hear about us? There is a, a thing in the drop down that says all things overlanding. So just click that, let them know that I sent you. I'd appreciate it. Um, that would be great. Uh, Overland Addict. Again, amazing overlanding store, tons and tons of cool gear, tons and tons of stuff from Scottles to Last US Bags products, which Last US Bags is another one of my featured partners. Great quality gear. Um, he sells everything. So definitely check him out in the description below in that link. Um, and then Northology Overland. Great free digital adventure themed magazine. Comes out every month. Um, so check that out as well. Again, I cannot mess up on any of this, guys, or it, it, we're just we're going to deal with it. We're just going to keep going, so bear with me. Um, but so again, on today's episode, going to touch on my top 10 pieces of overlanding gear that changed everything for me um, in no particular order. So I'm just going to kind of run through this stuff. I'm going to talk a little bit about each piece. Um, I'm going to try to put some timestamps below so you guys can you know quickly navigate from one to the next if you want to hear about a specific thing. Uh, so I hope that's helpful. Um, so let's start with my Wham Hidden Bumper and my winch. If you're a Nissan Xterra person, you've probably heard of this thing. I've seen a lot of talks online about it, people asking questions and things like that. Um, I love it. So first of all, if you buy this thing new, it's about $500. Um, I found mine used for about half that. And then on top of it, the person that I bought the used bumper from had a Smitty built 9,500 pound winch with it. And so I bought that for about $250 more. So for about $500 total, I got my you know, 3 16 inch steel wham winch bumper with uh, two spots for D-rings on it and my winch with synthetic line, a Factor 55 flat link on it already ready to go. So I got really lucky, right? I, I made a steal. But even if you aren't that lucky, if you can't find a used one, again, new, these things are about 500 bucks. They're pretty fast to ship is what I've heard from people that have bought them new and people really like them. So I um, highly recommend that. I'll put a link in the description below to that so you can find it easier. Um, same with the winch and all that sort of stuff. So if you wanna find that stuff, click on those links below to check those out. But why I talk about this is as something that sort of changed my trip. So semi-recently, in the last couple of months, I went out to Hoosier National Forest, which is not a very challenging place, but there was this one spot that was super, super deep and muddy. And I kind of knew it going into it. I was like, you know what? I could get stuck. I could high center here pretty easy. And, you know, in most cases, I would have just taken the easy route around and just avoided it, right? There was a bypass. I could have taken that. Um, but there were like four other rigs with me. So I'm like, I'll be fine. I'll just, I mean, what's the worst that happens? I get stuck. I got a winch. I got these other people. Um, I go into it. Sure enough, I, I high center. I don't have any lockers, right? I Mine is a an SE trim Xterra, so I don't have the rear locker like the Pro 4X or off-road trim Xterras, um, which wouldn't have helped anyways because I was literally like sitting on my diff. Um, but with the winch, so here's the thing is, again, I thought, oh, I'll just have someone pull me out. I jump out of the truck, jump over the mud, start looking at it, and there's literally no way that anybody can get around me once I'm stuck in it to get in front of me. And there are a lot of trees in front of me, so there wasn't a good 
line, there wasn't a good way for someone to get enough of a run up to actually snatch me out of there. So then again, you know, think about that. If I hadn't had a winch, if I had had no other options, I mean, maybe some traction mats, maybe might have, but I mean, I'm literally sitting on my differential. So I don't even think that that would have helped. Maybe, maybe I could have dug it out some, maybe, you know, who knows? I could have spent an hour there, hour or two, trying to dig the thing out. Or what I ended up doing was grab the winch, had one of the other guys, you know, take it to a tree, de-ring it up for me. Um, and then just literally just slowly pulled myself right out of the hole, no problem. Um, and again, I go solo a lot, so that's a really big peace of mind for me too, just to have something that I know. Um, if I got stuck, I at least have, I have the traction boards, I've got all my recovery gear. I've got a strap if somebody happened to be around and it was feasible, but then I've also got the winch. Um, so that thing definitely was a game changer. And especially after that last experience, now that I've really used it, I'm like, wow, yeah, this was definitely worth the purchase. I mean, it's just been riding around on my truck. I haven't gotten stuck really since I got it until a couple months ago. So definitely a fantastic uh, addition to the truck and definitely something that changed, you know, overlanding for the better for me. So that's number one. Uh, number two the lift wheels and tires, right? So this is kind of like your, your overlanding 101, simple, fairly inexpensive modifications to kind of get you started. You don't have to have a rock crawler. You don't have to have a full XO cage on your truck. You don't have to have, you know, tons and tons of armor and all that stuff. I do have armor, you know, obviously it's better to have armor than not to have armor. Um, but just having a lift and some bigger wheels and tires, so the lift makes room for the wheels and tires, which gets you a little bit more clearance, which means you can go to more places, right? So that was a big change for me. And that was one of the first mods that I did to the truck. Like literally when I bought the truck and I was driving at home, I had already ordered uh, new tires. I had ordered the lift for it. I've now changed all that up. I have a different setup on the truck as I've kind of evolved over the years. But same idea, right? About two and a half inch lift on the Xterra is about the max that the drive line can take, the drivetrain can take. Um, but with 33 inch tires on there, I've got RTs now, which I'm super, super happy with. They, they're they much quieter than the MTs that I had before and the MTs that I had were pretty worn out. So these are brand new tread RTs. So I'm really excited to see how they do off-road. So far on-road though, they've been vastly superior to the old MTs that I had. Um, so, but you know, giving you that ability to go more places, um, letting you get farther out than you could if you were bone stock, that is an important thing. And that's something that will change a lot of trips for you, right? So you won't be as nervous. You won't be as worried about damaging something as worried about getting stuck. So definitely like a, a basic, even if it's like a spacer lift or a, a longer shackle or something, at least that gets you to the point where you can put bigger wheels and tires on it, get to more places. So that is definitely a big one for me as well. Um, rooftop tent. So this one is not so much on the budget side, although mine is more of a budget-minded rooftop tent. My rooftop tent, if you haven't seen my other videos where I talk about it, was about 900 bucks, um, plus tax, so call it a thousand. Let's round up and say it was a thousand bucks. But it's sort of that free spirit recreation, easy up um, tent. The only sort of downside to it is that the cover is kind of a pain in the butt. But aside from that, like the tent itself is fantastic. It's about seven foot by four feet. So it's it's got plenty of room for me and both my kids or me and the wife. And we put the kids on the ground in a ground tent. Um, but so that helped in a number of ways. So let me list out a couple for you. One, it moved stuff out of the cab, which if you're familiar with Xterra's or if you have, a, you know, like a Colorado or something that just doesn't have a ton of room in it, right? A smaller SUV or a pickup truck that is just a quad cab and maybe doesn't have as much interior room. Maybe you don't have a cap on it or a, you know, a, a rack or anything. Um, by having the rooftop tent, I moved all my bedding out. I moved all of my memory foam mattresses out of the, the truck. I moved my pillow out. I even store some other gear up there like hot hands and just like small miscellaneous stuff, my lanterns, my lights, that sort of stuff. Um, even now, um, I store my poles for my awning up there too because they're long and thin. They don't take up a ton of room. I don't really need them until after I set up camp. So that seemed like a good place for those. Um, so it got me a lot of storage up top and freed up a ton of space inside the truck. Um, again, I'd been a hammock camper. I had been a tent camper. I'd been a cot camper. I've, I've pretty much done all of it. I've slept in the truck. So I've pretty much done everything and now I've landed on the rooftop tent. I think my ultimate sort of evolution will probably be a hard shell rooftop tent, maybe even potentially on a trailer so that I can leave it as a base camp. Um, but again, for now, I'm super happy. I feel like I'm in a great place with it. It has literally changed my trips. And more so than just even the moving this stuff out, 
it also frees me up to leave quicker. So again, I leave my bedding in it all the time. I make sure to dry it out. I make sure if, if there's condensation in it or something like that when I'm winter camping, that I do open it up the next day and just sort of let it air out and get all the, the condensation out of there. But then I leave my bedding up there 24 seven. So again, then that just gives me that freedom to run out to the truck, say, hey honey, can I go camping this weekend? And the wife says, yes. Boom, I'm in the truck, I'm throwing some food in the fridge and I'm taking off, I'm ready to go. Um, so that was definitely a game changer for me as well. So I'm trying to keep these, you know, two things that are really significant, right? Like the things that really made a difference. Like I've got a ton of different pieces of gear. All of them made some sort of a difference at one point or another. Um, but these are the things that really sort of changed everything for me. Um, so speaking of awnings, let's move to that next. So I have, for the last four years, I've had a tough stuff awning. And it's been great. I really like the awning. It's really well made. It's lasted the whole time. I haven't had any issues with it from a like a reliability standpoint or anything breaking or anything on it. I did break a, an arm one time because I left it up all night in the pouring rain. I didn't drop it enough on one side, so it accumulated and then broke the arm when I went to try and drain it. Um, but that was user error. That was my fault. Um, however, it's a pain to set that one up. It's the one where you've got to pull the whole tarp out and then you've got to pull out two arms and then you've got to drop two legs and, you know, single by yourself when you're solo like that. You're wrestling with this tarp and you just look like an idiot, right? Like you just, you feel like an idiot, you look like an idiot and it's a pain to set up. So most of the time I didn't even set it up because it was too much of a hassle. Um, I have recently upgraded. I spent a little bit more and I, and I worked with uh, Chad from uh, Overland Attic, who I mentioned in the beginning here. And he was fantastic to deal with, but um, I'll put a link down in the description below to his site too, so you can go check out this awning. But it's the OVS 180 awning. And the reason I got a 180 is I have an Xterra, so the rear hatch opens up. So I've already got that other 90 degrees pretty much covered that a 270 would normally cover. So I didn't really need the 270. I just wanted the 180 to cover the whole driver's side of the truck. So the awning covers the whole driver's side. The hatch covers the rear of the truck where I cook and have my fridge and my drawer system. And then on the, the passenger side is where the ladder for the rooftop tent goes. And then that's got an awning too. So that's kind of covered as well. Um, but this thing is just, oh my gosh, it's a, it's definitely a more pricey awning. You know, like the, the tough stuff awnings new are about 250 to 300 bucks. Um, this thing was about $700. So it's not inexpensive per se. However, it is probably has twice as much square footage. I mean, it, it opens up further out than the, the tough stuff did. It's longer than the tough stuff was by about a half a foot. And then it also has these wings sort of that open up. They're sort of like triangles. So there's a square in the middle and then there's the two triangles on the end. Um, it covers literally the entire length of the truck and then some. And it's freestanding. So again, if you're gonna have high winds, you're gonna have a lot of rain and stuff, it does have legs that drop down from it and it's got a couple of other legs that I'm storing in my rooftop tent that you can put up for additional strength. Um, but just the fact that I can literally unzip the cover, swing this thing out and attach two hooks to the ends to hold it taut um, and have it set up and not have to worry about bumping into legs or people going in and out from underneath of it and bumping into stuff and knocking it down um, is a game changer for me. So again, it costs a little bit more, but I think the quality is way better. I think the usability is way better. I mean, in the last three or four years, I've probably been on 30, 40 trips, if I had to guess, the last couple of years, two or three years. Um, and I probably used my awning four or five times because it was just the tough stuff was so hard to set up. And I'm seriously like every single trip, if I'm setting up the rooftop tent, I'm setting up the awning because it's we're talking about an extra two, three minutes of takedown time to put it away. And it's just so much easier, right? I can put my table under it. I can cook under it. I can prep food under it. If it is raining or drizzling or snowing, like we can sit under it. The, we can have the fire and the portable fire pit, you know, under the awning. And, and, and that's just fantastic. So, so yeah, so that is, that is a game changer. Actually, maybe don't have a fire under the awning. <laughs> maybe a propane fire would be fine. Maybe don't have a real fire under your awning. That would be a bad idea. See what I mean? This is live, guys. I can't cut it. We're just, I'm leaving it. Um... But so the free standing awning is awesome. Again, look in the description below for links to that if you're interested in that. But Chad at Overland Attic will help you out with that because they're amazing. Um, so then kind of moving to the back of the truck, the drawer system. That thing was, you know, and mine is very budget minded. I spent about 150 bucks on uh, material for it. And then I had a really talented buddy that helped me put it together and uh, for some beer, <laughs> which was a great deal. Um, but I mean, I use that thing every single trip 
And similar to the rooftop tent, not only does it make things easier, not only does it help me, you know, not have to worry about forgetting stuff, it just helps me be prepared and ready to go quicker. So I know what's in that drawer system. I've got some canned goods, I've got all my little propane tanks, I've got my regulator for my stove, my stove is stored in the in the, the drawer system, my chainsaw is stored in it, my fridge is stored on top of it. So I mean I've got all this stuff is ready to go at any given time. So literally all I have to really worry about is food. You know, if I'm taking my kids with me, what do they need? And that's about it. I keep everything else in the truck, so I'm ready to go. Um, so that drawer system has just been killer. It's been an amazing thing. And I've had it for a year, year and a half now probably. And again, I, I wouldn't do anything different. I, I've had some people say, oh, but you lost your underfloor storage. That's true. Um, but if you're not familiar with the exteriors, there's about a five or six inch deep sort of space underneath of it above the spare in the back of the truck. But you have to lift it up. So let's pretend like I didn't have a drawer system, right? Let's pretend like I had Plano crates or, or you know, some sort of crates full of gear or just loose gear sitting back there. You still either have to move all that stuff off every time you want to get to that thing under the floor or you have to lift it up with all the junk on top of it. Um, and it was so thin, like it's only a few inches deep. So it was so thin that you could only store, like I had recovery straps under there and like some of my recovery gear and that was about it. Um, now that's stored in my drawer system. So that's the only thing that I lost was that little bit of space underneath the floor, but it, it wasn't really that usable anyways, in my opinion. Um, but so the drawer system, definitely life-changing for me. Um, chainsaws. I now have two chainsaws. I have an electric chainsaw, which is fantastic just for like wood processing. It's really quiet, so I don't have to worry about being that guy that's like, Wah! you know, out in the woods. But then I did recently pick up a gas chainsaw as sort of like a backup. Um, the, the electric has a 10 inch bar, so it's not doing much, right? It's Again, it is mostly for processing firewood and stuff like that. But the, the new one has an 18 inch bar, so it's almost twice as long. I mean, I can cut down, if there's a, you know, a tree that's falling across the road or something like that, that gas chainsaw will go through it, guaranteed. It's amazing. Um, but just having the chainsaws, right? Like, I mean, before the chainsaws, I was using hand saws and axes and things like that, and it was a nightmare. Like, I had one time where I came across a tree down in the road and it was maybe, six, seven, eight inches across, I felt like I was gonna have a heart attack. And I'm I'm not like super out of shape. I mean, I'm a little chunky. I'm getting a little fat now, but in my old age, but like, I, I'm not like terribly out of shape. And I was, ha you know, just wheezing by the end of chopping through that thing. And that was just to get through it once. And I'm like, we're dragging this thing. We're using the winch or we're hooking it up to the bumper and we're dragging this thing out of the way because I'm not cutting it again to try and get this thing out of the way. Um, so the chainsaws are definitely like a must have if you're going to be going on any like more adventurous, like more farther out there type stuff, um, Ozark type stuff, you know, UP of Michigan stuff where there could be trees down and things like that. The chainsaws make a huge difference. So that one's another one. Um, my GMRS handhelds. So if you're not at all familiar with radios, you know, there's CB, which everybody kind of talks about. That's kind of the old school stuff. That's what I had growing up when I was younger. You know, we had CB radios in our Jeeps and stuff, and that's just what everybody used. So it's kind of the, the default. So a lot of people still use CBs, and there's nothing wrong with it. But the GMRS is just so much easier to use. You don't have to tune it. You don't have to, you know, worry about your antenna. Is it high enough? Is it the tallest point on your vehicle? Is it mounted right? Is it grounded right? Like... It's just, I have two little handheld GMRS radios. I get about two miles of range out of those things. I can hand one to a buddy if he doesn't have comms and we can go on a trip and we can talk to each other. Then we can throw it back in the truck and charge it up off the solar and we're good to go. Um, so the GMRS handhelds made a huge difference just in usability, ease of use, communications, making things way easier. And also like, again, if, if I'm the only one with comms and I go somewhere, I've got a pair of them so I can hand one out to somebody. Um, so definitely the GMRS radios are big, big plus two. Um, again, I'll put links in the description for all this stuff. Um, my Viair 88P. So it's a little tiny, small compressor. It's really inexpensive, maybe 50, 60 bucks. Um, but again, I have 33 inch tires. Typically when I air down, it's like 15 to 18 pounds that I'll air down to, kind of depending on the conditions. And to air back up to like 32 to 35, probably like three to four minutes a tire, which is, is a lot. I mean, like it's not, you know, this is not an in-deflate system. This is not something where you go around, you hook it up to all four tires and you go, and you're, you know, five minutes later, you're all done. It does take a little bit of time. Um, but the Vyr 88P for the money is so inexpensive. And it's just so nice to have that with you. Again, I've used it at like sporting events to air up like a soccer ball for my kids. I've used it to put air in my kids' tires for their bikes when they're like at a friend's house and we're over there hanging out. 
and they come and they say, oh, my bike tire's flat, or, oh, we didn't air these up before we left. Boom, I got one right in the back of the truck. We can take care of that. Um, but so just having that, having that small footprint, having it be portable and, and removable from the truck is really nice. And again, I recently released another video. I'll put a tag up here to it. Um, I've picked up a, a quick release air chuck for it, which that's kind of a sub piece of gear that is, is sort of game changing too. But that sped up the process of normally going around and screwing it onto each uh, valve stem and then unscrewing it and moving it to the next one. Now I can just, you know, quickly release it and, and move it around. But so I love that little air compressor. And again, just that peace of mind, right? Like um, one time I did get a flat on the side of the road. I got a flat tire driving home from Hoosier National Forest. I had my seven-year-old with me. He was seven then in the back of the truck and we're going about 70 and I start to feel the truck sort of pull a little bit and feel weird. So I start to slow down and as I hit about 55, 60, all of a sudden the left driver's side front tire just lets go. And I, the whole truck drops, you know, and I don't have any sway bars and I got a rooftop tent. I got all this stuff moving around, but it, you know, I, I wrestled it to the side of the road and it had actually, I'd torn the valve stem out of it and I kind of forced it back in there and I threw the, the, uh, vire on it and I aired it up enough to limp it to the next, uh, off ramp and I got it off into a hotel parking lot and I swapped out for the spare and I, I drove home it was fine um, but again just having that vire to help me in that sort of dangerous situation was amazing um, and that kind of brings me to my next mod so mod number nine if you will uh, the Colby valve stems this is a super budget minded piece of gear these things are like 30 bucks for two of them but now that I know about them if I had had that in that situation so I was on the side of the road, you know, semi's going by 70, 75 miles an hour, wind blowing the truck around, super sketchy, super dangerous. Again, I was trying to air this thing up and, you know, the longer you're on the side of the road, the scarier it is, right? Um, these valve stems though, I could have just pulled the old valve stem off and the way that the Colby's work is you basically push it through the hole where the old valve stem was and then you twist it. You twist it and it basically forces a flange behind the, uh, the tire sidewall out so that it holds in place and then you can air right back up through it. So I wouldn't have had to mess with limping it a mile, you know, changing the tire with a high lift, which is always a little bit sketchy, um, especially with my kid in the car. Like if something happens, nothing shoots out at me and this seven year old is going to be by himself in a parking lot, you know. Um, so the Colby valve stems have been a huge game changer, like huge peace of mind for me, right? Like now that I've experienced that myself, especially like on the trail, this is going to happen more and more. Like I was actually kind of shocked that I made it all the way out of the woods and like 45 minutes north before it blew because the valve stem was just hanging by a thread. Um, but so the Colby valve stems again for about 30 bucks for two of them, you can get them from Overland Attic. So again, link in the description below. Um, that's where I got mine, but they're fantastic and they're really cheap. And they're just, again, something to have that doesn't cost a lot of money, doesn't take up a lot of room. But if you ever get in that situation, you're going to be so glad that you had them. Um, so then the last, let's wrap this up at the back of the truck, uh, the fridge, my fridge. So, you know, I won't say that this is a necessity by any means, but again, we're talking about things that have really sort of changed my overall experience when I go overlanding. So I do want to talk about the fridge a little bit because it has definitely made a huge change. Um, again, you can get along fine with, with fridges and stuff like that, that old F40 C4 TMP fridge or uh, cooler that I used to have was a great cooler, would keep ice for like three or four days, which is pretty nice. But if you're going on a longer trip, five, six, seven, eight, a couple weeks, you know, then there definitely could be a time where you're gonna, you're gonna have to go get more ice, right? Your stuff's gonna start to go bad. Um, if you're in a hotter environment, that gets a lot harder to keep that stuff cold for, for that long. Um, so when I got my fridge, I have an Alpacool 58 quart. It's a pretty good size fridge. It was under 300 bucks. So, I mean, you know, like my, that, that, uh, that cooler that I was talking about was like 120. So yeah, it's, you know, two and a half times as much as that thing, but you know, it's, it's amazing. Like if you're a beer drinker and you want to have cold beer, if you have kids and you want to have cold pops and, you know, cheese sticks and you, whatever the, the kids need, right? Like applesauce pouches, yogurt pouches, like all that sort of stuff that you need with kids. Um, a fridge will solve all those problems for you. And as long as you have the appropriate battery to run it, you know, sufficiently, I have an AGM deep cycle class 34 in my, my truck now that I run it off of that just, you know, the alternator charges it up while I'm on trips during the day. And then I hit camp at night and it runs it all night and get up and move on the next day. And it just keeps going. Um, but I mean, again, that thing has just been awesome. Like when I went to core last September, 
I was there for four days, and then on the way back, I stopped in another national forest and stopped there, and that thing just it was running the whole time and had cold drinks and steaks and, you know, all kinds of good stuff that I could keep in that fridge, and it was awesome. So, again, not a necessity, but if you're, you're looking to sort of up your game, definitely a fridge would be a great thing to, uh, to include in that. So, you know, that's pretty much it for this episode. Again, guys, this was live, so I apologize that there's no fancy graphics. I apologize I don't have a bunch of B-roll, because I actually do have a bunch of B-roll of all this stuff that I would love to edit in over top of it to make it not so much just my head talking at you. Um, if you're on the podcast, you don't know any of this, so just pretend like what I just said didn't happen. Pretend like everything's fine. Um, but if you're watching on YouTube, sorry for that, but, you know, I, I figured I'd rather get something out for you guys than nothing, so this is what I got. Um, so again, thanks to all of you for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, if you don't already, down in the description below, there are links to Facebook, Instagram, the podcast, if you're on YouTube, YouTube, if you're on the podcast, definitely go and subscribe wherever you want, wherever you want to hang out. No pressure to do it somewhere that you don't hang out. But if you're active on Facebook or Instagram and you want to come chat and you want to, you know, see pictures of the truck and stuff, come hang out. I'd love to talk with you. Um, also definitely, like I said, check out those links below. I put links to all the products that I talked about in this video and all my featured partners who are all fantastic. So if you're looking for anything they offer, definitely check them out as well. Um, but other than that, that's the end, guys. So again, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We will talk to you next week. And uh, until then, get out there, live, learn, and discover. Talk to you soon.